a massive achievement for Callum Tripp this week. Being named League Two Apprentice of the Season is one heck of a feat, isn't it, for, for someone so young? Yeah, um, it is, and he, he fully deserves it, I think. Since we've come in, he's, um, he's not been shy in terms of asking questions um, and wanting to know where he can improve, um, which is quite unique from such a young lad, um, especially these days, um, which is, it's been nice to, to see. Um, and yeah, he's got, he's got a lot of abilities, the size of him, um, obviously his mindset in terms of wanting to improve. Technically, he's very good, he can play in a few different positions. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased for him and uh, he can just take this and knowing the, the lad he is, he, he won't phase him and he'll just keep working and doing what he does. He's been, well, it feels like he's been a part of the, the first team fold around MK Dons for so many years now. I think he was an unnamed substitute. Um, a few years ago, he would have been the youngest player I think ever to have appeared in the FA Cup at the time had he yeah. come on. And, it feels like he's, he's already part of the furniture, but it's easy to forget how young he is, given that he's, he's I suppose, achieved quite a lot for, for his age. Yeah, definitely. I think that's uh, yeah, spot on. Um, for me, he, he's, I, I just I really enjoy his, his mindset, and I think he might get a few lads that have been around it um, for the amount of time he has and kind of come away, but his habits are spot on, his uh, attitude is spot on. He's still as hungry as ever. Um, he's such a humble, grounded, down-to-earth uh, lad. And I think that's what's going to maximise his ceiling because he's got a lot of potential. Um, and it's easy to get frustrated when you're feeling as though you know you want to have more time and involvement um, when you've already had a taste of it. Um, I've experienced that in my career where you get a taste and then you get, you know, and next moment you kind of you don't feel part of it and then you get a bit more and you're just desperate to have more and it can affect you emotionally but it hasn't with him and it's, he's been spot on. Um, where do you see his position? Because I think we've seen him play pretty much everywhere. Um, we've seen him play in the back line, we've seen him play central midfield. Do, do you, or has he narrowed down where, where he, he thinks his best position is? Um, I think that um, as a centre-half, he's, he's got everything. He's got the athleticism, he's got the technical ability, he's obviously got the physicality. Um, but I actually enjoy the versatility and it, him at the minute kind of having to um, develop in different areas and different skill sets really. I think you look at the best centre halves that have come through, they, they wouldn't have started centre half. You know, you always start either you know, midfield or he's sometimes centre forwards, best players play in the most influential positions. But because of his physical profile, I think centre half is going to be somewhere where he can really make his own. Was that where you started then, in, in central midfield or centre forward? Centre midfield, then I went to striker for a few years and then as soon as I started playing for Torquay, they kept knocking me back <laughs> and I found my place. So, um, Playoffs then, guaranteed, um, confirmed last night. Um, I think we all probably knew that it was pretty much on the cards after Saturday, but I suppose knowing gives you that concrete base now to, to start building and, and looking forward to those two games at the end of the season. Yeah, certainly does. We are excited. Um, obviously, you know we we've, we've all got to deal with last weekend, um, and for us, the group, the the feeling, the moment we're in, we've dealt with that, um, and now we know what we've got to do. Um, the playoffs is still a lot to play for in terms of jockeying for position, and you know, certain there's there's still three or four teams that can get get into the playoffs. So nothing certain, but we've got two very tough games um, for us, and that's what we're looking forward to. Our our whole preparation now is just how can we improve, um, regardless of, of what happens, who we're playing. Um, we've just got to make sure that we're in the best possible position um, to face it's what we know is going to be, whoever it is, is going to be very tough. Well, it's always, at this time of year, it's always talking about going into playoffs with momentum, isn't it? And, you know, with two games of the regular season to go, that's exactly what you'll be looking to, to put together now. Yeah, uh, I think we, um, when, since we've come in, if we would have had the, been given this opportunity in this position, you'd snap the hand off. Um, and I think the, the, some of the performances that we've seen from, from the boys have, have been uh, phenomenal. So we've got to make sure that we know of all the teams that we face are going to be looking at weaknesses and areas to exploit. But then also on the other side, they're going to you know, have that fear because we know what 
um, what firepower we've got and how strong we are and the way we want to play. Um, so it really puts it out there for the neutral to be you know, a very exciting prospect. But we've just got a job to do, so we are firmly focused on how and what we've got to do. When we spoke last week, we spoke about trying to keep a lid on the emotions, not trying to get too high going into the game against Mansfield. But after that disappointment, um, you know, there would have been a lot of disappointed faces in the dressing room afterwards. How do you not let it go the other way? You know, not, not getting too high, but also the not getting too low part. I just speak to them on, on a level. For me, I've, I've always tried and speak to them on a person, um, personal level, as a person, as a human being. And then we, that... that um, goes into the player. Um, we know the, I've spoke about before always, the player is never ever complete. The player is never ever enough. You can always be fitter, stronger, you can always have more detail. Um, football is such an unbelievable game with so many variables, you're never a finished article. So whatever um, the situation is, you, we always got to have that desperation to improve as a player. But as a person, you know, it's taking stock, it's zooming out, it's looking at where we've come from and looking at what we're doing, doing it for, like connecting that back to our values and who we are as a group and what we want to stand for as a, as a club. Um, and then it puts things in perspective and it turns a disappointment from that weekend um, and the fear of going into a playoff scenario to, for me, excitement and really wanting to dial it in. And I mean, I can feel it now thinking about it, you know, um, I can feel the emotions and it's just f for us so much uncertainty, but that's why we do it. Um, we know the tests are gonna be um, difficult, but we wouldn't want it any other way. We want the hardest possible tests. We need to be the best um, possibly prepared we possibly can be. And then we look forward to uh, going out there and, and leaving all out there and looking each other in the eye at the end of it. Come what may, um, really enjoying it and uh, I believe that we do that, we get where we want to get to. I suppose it's the, the fans always say it's the best way to go up, don't they, to, to, to go through the playoffs because of that high and low, because of those roller coaster games. Oh, massively. I think in terms of the um, pinnacle, the spectacle of doing it, I've never had the, the pleasure to experience that. Um, but I've many friends that have, and the euphoria of it is, is another level. But we can't focus on any of that because that's noise. We focus on today preparation. Harrogate then, um, a team that are mid-table, probably about mid-table form as well uh, of late. But you know they're they're not going to have their feet up. They're going to be still kicking and screaming going towards the end of this season. Yeah, and it's going to be a really difficult place to go. Um, they have got different um, different strengths, and they can mix it up. They uh, you, they've always been organised, and I've had experience of playing against their teams in the in the national league and uh, pre season. Um, and yeah, it's always we know what we're going to get. They're going to be organised, disciplined. Um, the manager's going to have them chomping at the bit, regardless of um, what the, there is to play for. Uh, and we've got to make sure that's that's our um, area of focus of just that when you're playing against such a, a well drilled percentage team that can hurt you in many different areas we've got to be on, on our guard and, and make sure that we're, we're prepared which we will be and they've established themselves as a, as a fairly solid League 2 team now haven't they? yeah yeah hugely um, so we went there when it was 4G um, in the National League and we are trying to get into the playoffs at the time um, and yeah they got their promotion and they are, they're, um, for me, it's a very, very good club. It's a solid club. The, the structure they've put in place, they've been making progress every single season. And I'm sure that they'll keep doing that and, um, and climb up the leagues. Um, finally, on the injury front, Joe, Tom, uh, Joe Tomlinson and um, Matt Dennis, how have those guys been? Yes, well, um, just got to be careful. Um, so I've, I've got nothing tangible to report back with them um, we've just got a slow but sure progress um, we've got to be uh, careful um, and make sure that we give, give them both optimal chance of being involved in it but yeah we're very hopeful.